Welcome back to Clever Coding. Today's video will be dealing with get line function in strings and C strings. So let's start out. Go on Dev C++, my IDE, what I'm using. All right, so now we've done our skeleton and now we're gonna do a simple example. Suppose we have some kind of console output that says enter your n name, okay? And we're limited to one thing. We know that uh, we just create a string data type called name and then that gets retrieved. Or you could also include a char data type called name with some elements, you know, like character by character, which we already discussed. But the case is that once once you enter your name, what do you think? How will it be displayed? It it's like this. Uh, like we'll say welcome, welcome back, and then the name will come over here. Okay, so if I run this. I'm going to enter the name. I'll enter clever. And look at that. Welcome back, clever. But if I want to enter like a full name, like being more realistic, because people have a first name and last name, if I write the complete stuff like clever coding, you're just going to see clever. Why not coding? And now this is a logic that logic behind is this extraction operator. This extraction operator will only read stuff in the buffer. And now what buffer is, is a, it's a, it's an area in the computer memory where it's like temporary area where characters are stored. And once, once the buffer gets full, it's like a bucket. So once the bucket gets full, it drops, I mean, it pours all the characters out to the screen. So, so in the bucket right now, the buffer, I, I put my name, like for instance, clever, I wrote. And once the once it saw a space or any kind of backslash n and backslash n is an enter key press. So once it saw anything like that, it would just flush the buffer at once, leaving everything else behind. And then when the program terminates over here, the the things that were stored in the buffer that were temporarily stored will be ultimately ignored. So that's and then we never get to use that ever again. So Without doing anything like that, and we want to print out our full name, we could use the get line function. So how am I going to do this? Get line. Okay, so get line is available without even including the header file for it, but it's a better programming practice to include those header files for more better understanding. So there's a header file called string. So once you include the string or not, you're going to be able to access the get line function. So get line function receives two parameters. Now parameters are stuff inside the parentheses. Now look, this is the first parameter. This is the C in. Now this is basically the stream. Uh, you could have I either a C in, you could have a C error, a C log. We haven't discussed that much uh, console screens, but this is the C in stream. Like, you know, that input thing, what we're input. So we put C in over here, this is permanent and then comma and space the next thing what I have to put is the variable name so basically name was declared over here whatever n variable you created you have to put it in there so once you do this and give a semicolon at the end you're gonna see your full name printing printed out on the terminal screen so I'm gonna compile and run this and you can see I write clever coding and yo Welcome back, Clever Coding. That's awesome. Now let's do this with C strings. C strings are a little different. They are included using the C string header. And I'm just going to modify a little bit over here. So this get line function changes. The format of this changes. First of all, you get the stream. You know, like the stream I told you that whether it's C in or console in or whatever it is. So C in, then you wrote get line. And then you put the parentheses. And inside these parentheses, you First of all, write the name of the variable and then the size. So basically in C string, I've told you that there are 
there array there's basically arrays of characters so for instance if this is an array of characters for instance i just give a random hypothetical size such as 15 now 15 means like fifth at least 15 i mean 15 is the maximum size of characters inside this array so basically clever coding will have less than that so i could write 15 over here so that's the size and this is the name of the variable and then once i save this and hit compile and run i'll write clever coding once again and then you can see welcome back clever coding that was awesome not only one space you could now the get line function has another parameter inside of this basically there's a secret parameter that's not written but it's by default and it's called a backslash n okay so what is this backslash n this is called a delimiter now delimiters are things that the function looks for in the code so once you write something in the buffer it, the backslash n is like the last character it looks for so it's like for instance you wrote clever coding and then one then after that you made another space or if you hit the enter key if it detects that enter key for us we can't see that but in the computer backslash n is the enter key and once it sees the enter key it will read this automatically and then this will be flushed to the screen called buffer flushed and once it does and if it doesn't see it meaning like there's another space and something else called i don't know alex or job or whatever it is all of this stuff will still be appearing on the screen now let's have an example on this by executing this once more okay now i put this up and this is not i just wanted to tell you by it's a character so it has single quotes i don't need to write that but i'm doing it for your understanding so now for instance i write clever coding uh alex job i don't know there's random characters let's just put some okay now look at that clever coding alex why did that happen because i didn't save and execute properly and if I write something like that, you're going to see all of that. Oh, what was the prop purpose for this? And the purpose is this character, 15 characters. It exceeded the value. So then automatically it flushed. So if I didn't have this 15, meaning I could have more than 15, I could say 100. And over here too, I put 100 size. Now, what the random values are you, oh, I was putting previously. Now, if I do it, but it doesn't have to exceed 100 so if i put all this you're going to see that same exact thing getting printed out on the console screen this is called the insertion uh, the extraction and then the console output over here on the screen so that was cool hope you like this one okay another concept underway now we introduce functions now what are functions these are basically small snippets of codes tiny snippets and they could be tiny or they be a little bigger than that and they are like basically defined before the min main function this is basically a function if i tell you this is called the main function and all stuff inside of this runs so we could also include make our own functions over here like and the function basically reduce the complexity of the program and makes it more readable, understandable. And also it makes it faster. So let's uh, define our own functions. We define them and then we call them. So basically, for instance, if I had something like, we'll have a, a scenario first. We have something like enter uh, to, we're having uh, an addition calculator. So enter two numbers. And then I say C in, a and then I say B and then over here I say A comma B okay so basically what happens is that it prints out the sum so basically I could just say something like uh, int sum is equal to A plus B and then I could print out the sum site sum S U M and then these insertions and uh, sum okay now if I execute, compile and run, enter two numbers, 299 and 39. And that's the sum. Okay, that was correct and everything. But you know, the thing is, if I wanna make another sum, what do I do? I'll have to create another variable. I will have to write this enter two numbers again. And it's just gonna make my code like, for instance, if you see this right now, if I wanted to do it, 
10 times or if I wanted to do it 20 times uh, I'll have to write this like this copy paste and copy paste and copy paste and copy paste and it really it's just gonna make it confusing and it doesn't really attract the user or anything and the programmer so what we programmers do is make functions things called functions that reduce complexity and easily accessible to all programs so basically we could after using namespace standard and before the in main function we could make a function now basically the body of the function is like this first it has a return type so it has a return type over here okay this is called the return type and right now i didn't write anything uh, which is syntactical and then after that i make the name of the function so basically i could say name and then inside are the parameters what the function needs so for the case of a sum sum function what i'm gonna do uh, is i'm gonna do this step by step first i'm gonna give the return type so the return type is basically the the residual value the output value what the function will generate and give to the console screen that residual value is called the return type and that type will be defined as in for now on for for the sum function what we're going to do so so this is the return type int after that is the name of the function i called it sum you could call it bum whatever you want after that int a int b now what i did over here is create two parameters and these parameters are basically which are going to be given by the user over here so basically if the user types nothing except just these two integers it has to declare and what it does is that it calls the function so over here it's just going to call it a and b and the thing is that it's going to perform that operation inside of that function mean the program control which is like a, a procedural programming that goes from top to bottom will go from here and then it's going to shift all the way over here and over here it's going to perform all the function when it gets its residual value it will come back over here and continue executing so that's what the logic to it and what i'm going to do over here is going to create another thing called a sum and basically the sum will have a plus b and then the thing the keyword is called the return and then after this it's going to return the sum so the return it's going to calculate the sum and it's going to return it so what i have to do over here is nothing but give two uh enter two values so i'm going to say like that and then after that i'm just going to call the function so what this is basically called over here is called i could write over here with comments two forward slashes defining the function okay not function function and over here right here where i'm gonna put a and b this is called calling the function so i'm gonna call the function over here and then basically the definition of the function is this the body so this is called definition of the function all right so what happens is that if i console out like that and put this right here like this semicolon save this and execute and run compile and run you're gonna see i'm gonna have to enter two numbers so 10 and 20 and 30 is the answer wasn't that easier now what i have to do else is just if i want to create more i'm just gonna have to use that same function again and again so basically we're like reusing stuff reuse reduce and recycle that's what we're basically doing some a comma b again oh basically it's just gonna get the same thing again so for us to get another value we just basically say c in a b and then like that and then end line and if you want more just two pieces of code rather than the whole block just to copy this and then paste right here and paste right here and now you can see that how many are these one two three and four so the four snippets and i'm four times calling the function sum 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 and sum so basically now i'm gonna execute this so compile and run and now i'll just have to enter 10 and 20 and there you go 30 and then 30 and 70 awesome so isn't this better it just got more better and 
not only sum, you, dude, you could just make any kind of function you want. You could call it multiply for mult, and then you could call it div, or you could make a square root, squared function. Squares are already given by another header file, and you can make any kind, and so on. You could create your programs, and fun using functions basically makes the program more easier, more succinct, and more readable. So, that was it with this video. Hope you like this one. See you in the next one. Bye.